Online with Richard Sandoval is a production of Hispanic Lifestyle, which is sponsored by Goya Foods. Goya Foods, America's largest Hispanic-owned food company, distributes over 2,500 high-quality food products ideal for every taste and every table. For a listing of Goya Foods products and great recipes, log on to Goya.com. Good morning, Brenda. How are you? But more importantly, how are you doing during this uh, what stay home, stay safe time in our lives? <laughs> Hi, Richard. How are you? So good to see you. And thank you for having me this morning. Um, I'm doing well, you know, hanging in there, um, just trying to take advantage of the time off and really focus on next steps and also how to, you know, um, just be more cautious and careful and what can I do in my daily life to protect myself, you know, um, but also looking at what, you know, how we can serve others in this time of crisis. Well, that's basically what you do. You represent other people, you help them formulate their story to share with people like me, other media outlets. But I've always wanted to ask you, how did you get into this business? What was your passion for it? And important, and more importantly, you love the Latino entertainment industry. Give me a little bit about your background. Actually, I started in the entertainment industry when I was in college. I started working at the at the Grammys, um, and I was there, fortunately, for the first Latin Grammy Awards, and started working with talent at that point. Since we were a very small um, skeleton, you know, group of um, employees at the time, it was the first year, and so there was probably about five of us. And since I was, I am bilingual, uh, they asked me to start coordinating with talent in Spanish. Um, and so that's how I really got started working with talent and in the entertainment industry. What made you, what were the conditions that made you want to go out on your own? I mean, you already had established a reputation. And so tell me about how you went on your own went to another company um, and started doing some, um, some online marketing uh, for the entertainment industry. And so, you know, I just, I felt bored. I was like, this isn't for me. I just, I miss, I miss PR. I miss publicity. I miss the social interaction with people. I miss, you know, the, the workload. <laughs> and right. so I decided, you know, I just need to do it for myself. This is my opportunity to really take all my skills and my experience and do something for myself, not work for somebody else, but work for myself. And so that's when I decided to launch, you know, my agency because I had, you know, had other experience working with other people, working for other agencies. And and it wasn't satisfying for me. I needed to do something that was going to fulfill, you know, my goals, my dreams, not be working for somebody else or let somebody else take my experience and, you know, use it basically to their advantage. There are some challenges that come with being involved with what many consider an old boys network. You know, I like to make the, the point that I am Latina, I am female, um, but that's not all I am. I'm, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an, you know, expert in the entertainment industry, in PR. And so I don't limit myself to only working with Latino talent, only working with Latino clients. Um, my media contacts are in mainstream as well as in the Hispanic market. And so I'm not just seen as, one entity but as a whole because at the end of the day we're all human beings and we all have the same need for content i don't want to say that they were the good old days but there was a time um back to the latino entertainment it it, it seemed like i was covering a red carpet for the almo awards we had the mahin awards um the Latin Grammys, uh, Nosotros. There was just seemed to be a lot of things that were going on at the time. I'm going to say that was about 10 years ago. Um, why, in, in your perspective, why do you think that kind of fell apart? Was it lack of corporate support? Was it lack of infrastructure? I mean, it just seems like it just went 
almost down to you know nothing. I know that there's still a couple of organizations that are doing some recognition, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I remember that, you know, clearly um, we did. We had a lot of awards, a lot of celebrations for Latinos and entertainment. And, you know, it was a great time, especially, I mean, I remember when I was at La Leaf back in, gosh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> and it, I was there for the longest uh, La Leaf festival, which was um, uh, two weeks long. I mean, it was at the height of the Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival. And it was, right. it was great, you know, um, and we had the Eagle Awards. We had the, you know, the Nosotros Eagle Awards, the Imagen Awards, the Impact Awards, the Nosotros, I mean, the um, Alma Awards, the Latin Grammy Awards, you know, all these awards, which was great because there was really a sense of, you know, celebrating our Latino culture and, and Latinos in entertainment, um, which was great. However, I think what happened was it was just too much, you know, and really when, too when much? everybody, well, I think that everybody was just um, doing their own thing instead of coming together. Everybody wanted to have okay. their own. And so diversity is great, but we need to find a way to join forces instead of everybody having their own awards and nobody's really coming together to do something. Like you look at the NAACP and they're very united. You know, um, you look at um, the Jewish community in entertainment, they're very united. I feel like you, like Latinos, we tend to be more um, segregated within our own community and you know, there's a lot of reasons why that happens. You know, first of all, I mean, we're not all from one country. You know, we have Mexicans, we have Cubans, we have Puerto Ricans, we have, you know, South Americans. We, I mean, we're so diverse. We have Colombians, we have Peruvians. I mean, we're so diverse within our own culture that um, I think we tend to see ourselves as separate more than we should be coming together and uniting and so i think if all of those organizations that are all great organizations would come together and create one big you know organization or even i mean naacp stands for national association of all colored people we're colored people too i mean you know anybody <laughs> right. you're not right you are absolutely right. is colored and so if we were to join forces we would have, I think, a bigger impact as a whole on our community and to the entire, you know, entertainment industry as a whole. Um, so they could see us as, okay, we are united. We're not all just, you know, looking out for ourselves and what benefits, you know, our organization, but how are we all working together to come together for one solid, you know, um, idea? I continue to ask people, I look at this as a pause in the economy and a reset button has been hit. So how is Brenda reinventing herself in, in the future and what is she telling her clients uh, about the time ahead of us? We can't rely on other sources to survive in this economy. And so we really need to look at what are we going to do for ourselves to survive? You know, I can't, you know, count on my client to, um, to do something when everything's on pause, you know, because a lot of, especially in the, in the entertainment industry, uh, a lot of it is around events and, um, personal, you know, contact and interaction. And so I can't rely on my clients. I can't rely on the government. I have to rely on myself. So I need to look for those other revenue, you know, opportunities to really look at um, how am I going to survive in this economy? I need to figure out what is it that the consumer needs and how can I be a benefit to them while still, you know, bringing in an income. So I'm looking at those, you know, opportunities and that's why I'm taking this time to educate myself to see, okay, what other forms of, you know, um, of, of revenue can I, uh, you know, do in, in this time so that um, I'm still relevant, I'm still, you know, practicing PR, I'm still working in the entertainment space, um, but I'm not relying on my clients, I'm not relying on the government, and I'm not relying on, uh, you know, uh, social 
connection in the sense of personal one-on-one -on -one connection. I'm looking more at virtual opportunities um, and creating, you know, virtual events, you know, experiential events, uh, opportunities where um, people are looking for something to do. They're looking for a way to come together. They're looking for a way to give back. And so, you know, utilizing um, these tools that we have to bring all of that together and create a space where people are still getting what they want, we're just adapting to, you know, the new way of life. And so these are things that I'm looking at to, you know, bring into the future and, you know, applying them not only to myself, but also offering these services to my clients as well, because it is definitely a new way of operating. And so we need to, you know, make sure that we're, we're utilizing, you know, these experiences for the long run and how are they going to benefit, benefit us um, and our future opportunities. Well, great. I, I want to thank you for the conversation. And uh, I really appreciate it. I wish you all the, the luck in the world and look forward to seeing you on the red carpet and or wherever <laughs> yes. in the future. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Richard, for your time. And, um, you know, I look forward to seeing you as well. And hopefully we get out of this sooner than later. But, you know, at the same time, we have to take, you know, our, our health as a priority and, and just be safe and just, you know, try to um, work through it as best as we can.